Hi, I'd like to welcome you to MOTC Training Center. I'm Ali Brown. I will be your instructor and pastor for the next hour as we study the Word of God uh, 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 and God's love. And then to, uh, let's go before the Father in prayer. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, giving you glory, giving you praise and thanksgiving, because you're worthy to be praised. We thank you, Father God, this, this word we hear, being engrafted word, which able to mature and grow us up, and that, that, that the people know how much you love them. And we give, them all, give you all the glory and all the praise and all the thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Now, last week we was talking about, the last time we was talking about God's love. And we're going to continue on God's love. It's so important to know how much God loves us. It's so, I mean, when we, get, we study the word of God and find out that he loves us unconditionally, he loves us no matter what we do, his love is not dependent on our actions or our deeds. He loved us before we were even in our mother's wombs. He loved us unconditional. So we want to identify what love looks like. So if you turn to 1 John 4.10, and it's going to say and tell you what love look, looks like. Because we, we, we can't measure if we don't know what it looks like. Because everybody in this world is looking for love in all the wrong places. And God wants us to look into his word. So 1 John 4.10 says, this is what love is. This is what love is. It says, it is not that we have loved God, but He that he has loved us and sent his son to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. That's what love looked like. It's not that we love God, but he, you know, all the time I thought love was I mean, I'm always focused on how much I love God, but I'm focused on, on how much God loves me. We should be focused on how much God loves us because he loves us with an unconditional, he don't change on his love. He don't persecute us with his love. His love is for everlasting to everlasting. It never changes. It never runs out. It never gets, it never gets a short. It says in uh, Romans 8.32, He who did not spare his own son but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with, all, with him also freely give us all things? So when God loves us, he's given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. He's given us everything we need in this earth realm. There is nothing he prepared of this earth for us. And then he made man. See, it's not that God is short. It's nothing short. It's no shortage in this world. I don't care what nobody say. There's nothing short because God pre prepared us a place to live. Before he, before he created us. And so in Ephesians 2, 8, it says, For by grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is a gift of God. So our salvation is the gift of God. God, uh, uh, it's a gift. And all we have to do is receive. What do you do when somebody gives you a gift? You receive it. And then you say thank you. Once, you get, once you're given a gift, you say thank you. It's not, he saved the whole world. So God so loved the whole world. But the whole world hasn't received him, but he, he, he died for the whole world. You know what? God loved the whole world. And if you're in this world, God loves you too. It says, uh, uh, today God wants you, to, wants you to know that he's not the kind of father who wants you to be sick or defeated. He don't want you to be kept poor or wanting. He, he's, he's, a, he's a good provider. Your needs are met. And all he wants you to do is enter his joy. He said, enter his presence. In his presence, there's fullness of joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I came for you to have life and that life more abundantly. He wants us to have the abundant life. He don't want us to be a, a, a lack of anything or walking in the, uh, of not uh, uh, short of anything in our life. He wants us to have, uh, he created us to, to be prosperous and be in health just as our soul prospers. He wants us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He wants us to be strong and mighty, mighty, powerful people in his earth realm. Ephesians 3.19 And to know the love of God which passes knowledge, you might be filled with the fullness, with all the fullness of God. So God wants us to enjoy this life. He, he wants us to, he calls us to be loved. Beloved. He wants us to have a, 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 be strong in him. He said, beloved, as you feed on Jesus' love for you, you'll be filled with the fullness of God. Like David, God anointing will begin to operate powerful in your life. God anointed will be operating in your life. He wants us to uh, 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 just understand his love is steadfast. He wants to get an understanding, not just get to uh, 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 know him. We want to get the knowledge of him so you can live this overcoming and victorious life that he's already paid the price through, through Jesus' blood. He told us in, let's turn to uh, uh, John 15, 9. 
It says, um, John 59, he says, I have loved you the same way the Father has loved me. So he says, live in my love. 1510 of John, it says, if you obey my commandments, you will live in my love. I have obeyed my Father's commandment, and in, in, in that way I have lived in his love. He said, I want you to live in my love. I want you to make a boat in my love. I want you to uh, just sit down in my love. I want you, want you to just, uh, 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 just uh, habitate in my love. I told you this so that you may be a, as joyful as I am, and your joy will be filled or complete. Love each other as I have loved you. This is what I'm commanding you to do. The greatest love you can show is, is to give your life for your friend. And Jesus said, I am your friend. He's given us all things. He's given us everything. And he wants us to be free. Be free in that love. There is nothing so great and powerful as God's love for his children. And we see, we are the children of God. We was, when we was born, we were born into his family, uh, 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 born into his kingdom, and adopted into his family. And that's what the family of God, we are the children of God. And God, as the children of God, he's our provider, he's our, he's our healer, he's our health, he's our peace, he's our joy. He's everything to us. And he, all he wanted to do is to, uh, to receive what is already done. Just receive this love that he so paid such a wonderful price for. Ephesians 2.4 says, God has a, has a great uh, quality for love for us. God is the greatest lover of all times. God is love. God loves us with an everlasting love. I mean, to think about God never, his love never pale. See, sometimes when we go through life, people, we, people love you today and they'll hate you tomorrow. They'll be your friends today and your enemies tomorrow. People, people are, they are change I mean, with, the, with the wind. The wind might blow and it'll be, it'll be, it'll be a, sunny, a sunny, wonderful day. And by afternoon, it might be raining. And that's why some people are. They, they, uh, they walk and, and they are dealing with their emotions and see, that's why I, the Lord said, put your trust in no man. Put your hope, your joys, expectation of good in the Lord. Knowing that it's the love of God in our life. And when you start realizing, when we start realizing how much God loves us, there are things in our household, and there are things in our life, we are we, we get confident, assured of his love. See, when we start getting the knowledge of him in, his, in our love walk, we don't, we, don't, we don't get fooled by the enemy as much as we used to. Because you know the, the Bible says he deceived the whole world. And he doesn't deceive us if we're if we not mindful of how much God loves us. It's the love of God bringing us a radical change. Right. Second uh, Titus 3, to, uh, 3, 5. 3, 3 to 3, 5. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, and wrong. We were slaves to passion and pleasure of all kinds. We spent our life in malice and envy. Others, uh, um, envy. Others hated us. And we hated them back. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, was revealed, he saved us. It was not because of any good deed that we ourselves have done, but because of his own mercy that he saved us through the Holy Spirit, who gave us new birth and new life by washing us with the washing of the uh, uh, word. He saved us. He redeemed us. He set us, he set us in heavenly places with himself. So... We, we, we get this love of God in our heart. The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So we have all this love. God has given us his love. We want to focus on his love because, see, it's not that he, we love him, but it's that he loves us. And you have to meditate on that scripture. And then meditate on that scripture because it's that he loved us with everlasting love. He sacrificed his own body. He went through Calvary. He died for us to live. And not only live, he to live abundant life. He don't want us to be a hoping and a wishing in this life. He wants us to be steadfast. He wants us to be focused. He wants us to be uh, focused on his love and focused on uh, uh, his purpose in our life. And when we start doing that, we'll start getting a new, uh, new vision. See, it's, it's a, a new uh, a hope, a new attitude. Ephesians uh, 1 5 says, Because of his love, we have already decided to adopt us through Jesus Christ. He freely chose to do this. Ephesians 1 6 says, And this bringing praise to God because of his wonderful grace. God gave us a. And now, you know what grace is? Grace is unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor. He says, he said God gave that 
un un unearned, undeserved to, uh, grace to us freely. He gave us that grace in Christ, the one he loves. So we have grace in Christ. We have favor. You, can, you know, you can ask God for favor anytime you want to. You can receive it. You, in fact, you're supposed to expect favor everywhere you go. You're supposed to be preferred everywhere you go. Because you are blessed. You're not looking for a blessing. You are the blessed Lord. People say, bless you, bless you. I am blessed. We are already blessed. I don't have to be, if you want to remind, I say, walk in your blessing. You are the blessed. But I don't have to say bless because we, we have to remind us that I am the blessed of the Lord. I have favor everywhere I go. We are blessed, highly favored people above everybody because we are king, kingdom kids. <laughs> we're not from here. So God wants us to remember that. Remember his love is unconditional. His, there's no condition that we can find ourselves in that God doesn't love us. So let's, let's, let's return to Romans 5 and we're going to read from Romans 5. Verse 6 through 8. Romans 5, 6 through 8. It says, You see, at the right time, when we were still powerless, God died for the ungodly. Very rarely would anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still alienated from land of promise, with no God and no hope in the world, God still died for us. While we were, while we were doing everything we thought we was, we was uh, 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 wanted to do in this earth, why did God still die for us? When did God, when did God die for us? Before the foundation of, of the world. While we were still sinners, He died for us. God, God love is perfect. There is nothing you can find that, 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 that there's nothing you can find wrong in God's love. God love, there's no fear in God's love. There's no, uh, 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 we don't have to be afraid in God's love because fear has torment. But God wants us to know that the perfect love casts all fear. 1 John 4.18 says that there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. Fear really does have torment. You can be so terrified with fear that you, you, uh, you, you do some wicked things or, some, uh, uh, or make some bad decisions when you're, when you're afraid. You can make some bad decisions out of fear. You can do some things if you, you are so quick and, and so fast because you're not thinking because the fear will drive you into torment. Fear will drive you to do things out of, out of your emotion and to drive you to do, listen to the enemy and, 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 and hearken to his voice and listen to the lie out of fear. See, but God's love is a perfect love. Perfect love casts out all fear. His love. When we find out His love, how much He loves us, we don't, have to, we, we don't have to be afraid about what the enemy is doing. Man been living in fear ram, ram of fear for uh, since the beginning, since Adam fell over in Genesis 3.10. When Adam said, I heard when Adam and Eve had this uh, 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 committed Grand, well, Adam committed grand treason against God. Eve was deceived. But Adam wasn't deceived. Right. But Eve, God told him that the day you should eat that, that fruit, you should surely die. God told Adam, Eve wasn't even created. God told Adam, the day, the day. But how did Adam die? We kept reading, Adam was still there. But he died spiritually. He was separated from God. And so it says in Genesis 3.10, he said, I heard, uh, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. See, already he was afraid of God because he had disobeyed God, so he was afraid. So a fear uh, 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 hide. Fear of hide. A lot of times people be in fear and they hide their bills. Just like their bills are not even going to... They, they hide them in a box somewhere and put them under the bed anywhere and, and, and like they're going to go away. They're not going away. They're responsible for them. They're still there. They do things. They hide their car. They, the men, that they don't pay the car note. What they do, they hide their car. So fear, fear will hide instead of facing the reality of faith, believing God, grace, I believe in God, love, for, for the need being met, people will hide. And God don't want us to be afraid. He wants to, uh, he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. And we have a sound mind. We have the mind of Christ. God love is permanent. 
God love, I mean, it's not changeable. It's not removable. It's, it's always, it's going to be right there, right there. Let's see, John 10, 27. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. My sheep don't, see, the I, I, Holy Spirit is always talking to us. He's talking to us, and it's us to us to listen. And it's also up to us to obey what we hear. Because he'll tell us, don't go that way. He's always telling, oh, 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 he remind you. Jesus said he's going to remind you of things I've told, of things I've said. And they follow me. They won't follow anybody. Just don't follow anybody because of the love of God. They won't just follow any, any person on TV or any person in a, uh, influencing them wrong. Because of the spirit. The, the love of the God is shed the love abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So we got that love. We got some love. We got knowledge of right and wrong. We, got, we understand when God is telling us, don't go there. Don't do that. John 10, 28 says, I give them life eternal. I give, I give to them eternal life. And they shall never ever perish. And not anyone shall pluck them out of my hands. Don't let nobody talk you out of your salvation. Don't let nobody don't, don't make you think you're not saved when you receive Lord. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And you are saved. Don't let no man come and tell you that uh, 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 once, uh, once saved and not always saved. If God says, can nobody pluck you out of his hands? That means can nobody pluck you out of his hands. John 10, 29 says, my father who gave, gave them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to pluck them, them out of my father's hand either. So if I'm in the kingdom of God, I'm in. If you in, you in. And, and so the thing about it, because do you hear people telling you, uh, uh, you're not saved. You got to do this to get saved. I remember a long time ago, uh, one of the um, person I knew was still smoking. And the person said, well, they can't be, sa they can't be saved and they still smoking them cigarettes. Well, that's condition. God said, you, you, you love, I mean, there's no, con if you believe in your heart and receive Jesus as Lord, this body might be doing something. But your spirit, man, is made whole. You're a spirit that lives in the body. You have a soul, your mind, your soul, your mind, will, and your emotion. This, and, and this body, you got to kill it. You got to die to it. So sometimes you got to uh, uh, go through this word of God. The, the word of God will control you, restrain you. The love of God will restrain you. So when we get this love of God and knowing that God loves us, we'll start, we'll walk in, 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 toward God. Keep looking at Jesus. I want you to keep looking. Yeah, keep your eyes on Jesus. Just keep your eyes on him. And before you know it, you'll walk right out of them cigarettes. You'll walk right out of that lust. You'll walk right out of that fornication. You'll walk right out of whatever you in. How do I know this? I walked it. And I'm still walking. Amen. I'm still looking too. Jesus' love is selfless. He has a selfless love. I mean, in, in Isaiah 53, 3, he says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it was our face from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. How much does Jesus love us? Even on the cross, this is how much he loves us. Even on the cross. Those who were crucified him, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. After all they have done, after nailing him and spitting on him and, and I mean and piercing him, he still loved enough. Father, forgive them. He was still asking for grace. He was still asking for mercy for the people who was committing committed the heinous crime against his body, who pulled it, plucked his beard out. John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, so whoever will shall have everlasting life. Now, I'm going to read this to you. God is the greatest lover, so love the greatest degree, the world, the greatest number, that he gave the greatest act, his only son, the greatest gift, that whosoever, the greatest invitation, believe the greatest simplicity in him, the greatest person, should not perish, 
the greatest deliverance. But the greatest difference have the greatest certainty, everlasting life, the greatest possession. I thought that was really, really awesome how it was broken down. He gave the greatest of all. The greatest of all. John 15, 30 says, Greater love has no man in this, that a man laid down his life for his friend. And Jesus laid down his life. He said, no man taking my life. I laid my life down for my friend. No one taking my life. You see, so when you, when it, because of his love, he, was, he, he did this because one died. One person died. And all of us came in through that one death. See, so he said, the super resurrection. Jesus had a super resurrection. The, the resurrection of Jesus is the greatest fact in history. Did you know that? It was the greatest fact in history. There is no other fact. In history is greatest Jesus resurrection there is more hard evidence that Jesus rose from the grave that there is evidence of any other thing in the history books more knowledge about him raising from the raising from the dead than any other knowledge more knowledge about his death and resurrection than any knowledge of anybody of ever Mark Anthony Mark Twain and anybody else Mark it's more than anybody else <laughs> Jesus is written it is written in books Jesus told us, he said, we, we sometimes say, we love you, Lord. And when things start happening in our life, we, we, get, we get to the point where we get worried or fearful. We say, I love you forever. And next month you say, oh, well, I love, I love you this week. And next month, well, I don't think God loves me because we base our love, God loving us on our circumstances. Because we think sometimes, our lady told me, God, God, God is not, God's too slow. God is not moving fast enough. Because I got to fix this myself. And I'm going. <laughs> because they don't have a knowledge of God. They said that. How can you uh, fix it for yourself? Consider uh, Psalms 103, verse 15. As for man, his days are like grass. He first like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone. In its place remind it, it no more. But, but from the everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him. And his righteousness with their, his, with their children's children. He says, man's life is like a, I mean, it's like a, it's like a shadow. That's fast. Man's life, so quick. And, and I asked 1333, and they said that he has kept his promise to us. It is just as the second psalm says about Jesus, you are my son, because today I have I become your father. God love us uh, with a, a, a not lack of or disappearing. He love us, for, he love us everlasting to everlasting. What does everlasting to everlasting mean? Everlasting to everlasting. It says it can mean from the beginning of time to the end of, end of time. It can mean at the very, it can, it can mean from the very beginning of time, God has loved you. This will continue for eternity as we share in his glory, in his beauty, praising his, him in the presence of ages to ages. Ages to ages, forever to ever, everlasting to everlasting. Think about this. There was, there, there, ne there was never a time when God did not love you. There will, be, there will never be a time when God will not love you. God loved us before we were in our mother's womb, before we was knitted together, before the sperm and the seed hooked up. <laughs> God loved us. Sper, the sperm and the egg, before they even got together, God loved us. God loved me uh, 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 for eternity. And he'll never, ever, ever stop. That's for everlasting to everlasting. Some friendship last season, people come in your life, they may be your friend and they stop speaking to you for whatever reason, or they don't even have a reason. You wake up one morning, you don't know what happened. You go, what happened? They don't want to talk to me no more. But that's not the kind of God we serve. Our God don't judge us. Our God, see, he put all the judgment, all the ridicule, all the uh, wrath on Jesus. He loves us. His love is clear. There's no cloud in his love. 
He says, and on, uh, uh, and on and on into eternity, he will continue to nurture and cultivate this relationship, our relationship with him, on and on and on for eternity. God love never fail. God love never, we always say God love never fail, but God love never fail. It never, never, never fail. Human love fail. Even the best of relationship, we let our loved ones down. Indeed, today many couples plan on their love failing by signing a prenuptial agreement concerning their, pos their possession or assets in the case of divorce. They, 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 they premeditate a, a failed marriage. <laughs> God love won't fail. That's why he said, don't put your trust in no man. Put your, all your trust in God. Why? Because God doesn't fail. God love don't fail. He doesn't fail. He's, he's, he's steadfast and true. Because any time that, uh, he, he told us in uh, uh, Isaiah 54.10, he said, though the, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, removed yet my unfailing love will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be uh, removed, said the Lord, who has compassion on you. And then Matthew 24, 35, it says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. Isaiah 43, 1 says, The Lord created jo Jacob and, for uh, and formed Isaiah, Israel. Now this is what the Lord said, Do not be afraid because I reclaim you. I have called you by name. You are mine. He calls us by name. He knows every hair on our head. That's how much he loves. He's intimate with us. He knows every time you lose a hair because he knows how many you got left. Every hair on your head is numbered. He knows you. He knows you're coming in. He knows you're going out. Isaiah 43, 2, he says, When you go through the sea, I'm with you. When you go through the rivers, they will not sweep you away. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, and the flames will not harm you. You know, and I know, there's times in your life, I mean, it was supernatural intervention. Things that happened to you didn't happen. You shouldn't have been here. God delivered you out of situation. You don't even know how it happened. But God was there. And you, I mean, you go through the fire, you go through the f flames, you go through the life. He was always there. To deliver. You might have some, you might have tripped up a little bit. You might have had consequences a little bit. But he was always there. Hebrews uh, 13, 5, it says, Let your way of life be without the love of money and be contented with such things as you have. For he has said, Not at all will I leave you. Not at all will I forsake you. Never. And so in Hebrews 13, 6, it says, So that you might say boldly, say, Lord is my helper. And I will not be afraid what men shall do to me. The Lord is on my side. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my might. The Lord is my savior. The Lord is who, who preserved me. The Lord is who stand with me. The Lord is who stand by me. The Lord is who covered me with his blood. It's all about the Lord. That's how much he loves us. God promised us that even the most the violent disasters, God's love will endure. We belong to him. He will never, he will, he will stay right there with us forever. If he say, I'll never leave you or forsaken you, he isn't gone anyway. He's right here. He's right here. God didn't promise that we weren't going to have no trouble. He did not say that. Because he told us in this world, you're going to have some trials and tribulations, but you might have peace. But you're going to have some trials and tribulations. But be courageous, be a good cheer, because I deprived of the ability to hurt you. He said, do you believe that? You're going to go through some stuff. But the most important part of the whole thing, go through it. Because God is there. God, God says... I love you so much, I will give you an easy, and uh, he didn't say I'm going to give you an easy and comfortable life, because he said you're going to go through some tr trouble. But he said I'm going to be a mist, I will be with you in the midst of, our tr of the trouble. So, uh, uh, he said, God said the path you take may be through the river, but you will not drown. <laughs> I love that. The path you, uh, you take might be through the fire, but you will not be consumed in the flames. That's what the three Hebrew bars went through. And, they, and when they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. What, what, kind of, what, kind of, what kind of God is that? They didn't even smell like smoke. 
God wants us to remember, enjoy the journey. I always say that. Why? Because God gave it, enjoy the, enjoy the journey, stay in the presence of God. In His presence is peace and joy and, and the Holy Spirit. Stay in His presence. Stay, my son always say, say, stay conscious. <laughs> he, said, he said, stay conscious. He said, when, you, when you're not conscious, sometimes you go through life and you, you're unconscious. You're not conscious of what you're doing. I said, stay focused. He said, stay conscious. God said, stay in his presence. And his presence is full of joy, peace, and, and the Holy Ghost. Because God is a God of now. Now faith is. Now. Some people are too busy worrying about yesterday. They can't even enjoy the journey. They can't even start staying in his presence. Or they're too consumed by the future. God don't want you to be consumed by what's going to happen tomorrow. Stay right now. Now faith is. Now God is. God is a God of now. God is not a God of yesterday and tomorrow is not promised. Stay hooked up to him now. Right now. He said faith is the something of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. He said stay hooked up to him now. And, and he, in, the, in the reality of the truth, his word, of what he says. Don't, don't get all, all way out, off, off track. God's love is both individual and corporate. So what I mean by that? He is corporate by us. Uh, uh, he has uh, uh, got us all. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. That's corporate. Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. That's corporate. We are together in the body of Christ. That's corporate. But he loved us individual. He loved us individual. Uh, 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 he is our father. He loves it and he knows everything about us. He knows, now you think about it, God knows everything about everybody on the whole planet. Everything. Everything's going to ever happen to you, he knows about it. And then, see our mind gets stuck on that, like how can he do that? Because he's God. Amen. That's how. He knows everything. He loves us. If it's not a love that looks good to the good to the good of all, but neglect the good of individual. He loves us individual. The image of him and our father as we are his children, as, as those adopted into the family, shows his love for each of us. God is a father who knows his individual children, who care about their bruises, strapes, who tenderly holds them in their arms when they need comfort. You know, it's a good thing to understand and know that you, you can go to God and say, I'm a father. And crawl right up in his arms in time of trouble. And get that peace to pass all understanding. When you're going through some hardships and some, your, your, your heart is heavy and burdened down. You can, go to the, you can go to him and he'll strengthen you in that inner man. He will give you that peace to pass all understanding. He'll give you that peace. And he'll give you that joy. And he'll give you that assurance that he's for you. And he's not going to be against you. God's love is unconditional, everlasting, everlasting, it never fail. And God wants you to know you're an individual. Uh, uh, 1 John 4, let's go to 1 John 4, and we're going to read from uh, verse 7 through 11. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that love is born of God and knows God. He that love not knows not God, for God is love. And this was manifest the, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here is love, not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his Son to be the, uh, 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 the means by, uh, by which we are saved. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. We are accepted in the beloved. God calls the beloved. Ephesians 1 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in his beloved. He told Jesus, uh, when, when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in Matthew 3 17, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, It was God saying, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. We are ple God is pleased with us through Jesus. He sees us through the Jesus. He don't look upon us. When he sees us, he looks 
at us through the blood of Jesus, through Jesus. And see, I'm glad God came, you know, people look at me, look at me. No, don't look at me. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. <laughs> look at me. I'm glad he don't look at me. I'm glad because he sees us through, the, uh, uh, through, the, uh, uh, through Jesus. Jesus' uh, ministry began with the approval of the Father. When God called us to the beloved, he called us approved. Even before he had performed any miracles, God told him he was his beloved. God wants us to know that we are his beloved and that he is well pleased with us. Isn't that awesome? He's well pleased with us. So when the devil comes in and try to condemn you, you have to say, I'm, God, God is well pleased with me. And I have to be well pleased with myself. Maybe I'm not well pleased with my behavior, but I'm well pleased in his eyesight. I thank the Lord. I, I'm working on this behavior. I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. Don't worry about the behavior. The behavior will, uh, will be all right. It'll get right. The more we know how much we are loved and treasured by God, the more we can expect good things to happen in our life. We are treasured by God. We are God's masterpiece. You know you're God's masterpiece. There's only one me in the whole world. You know, people say, they broke the mold. Yeah, the mold was broken by each one of us. Only one, and we are his treasure. We can expect to be healthy and whole. We can expect our life, our, 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 our desires being met. We expect our Heavenly Father wants us to live a life confident that you are his beloved. Somebody say, beloved, you are my beloved. No one used that term. The only person I've ever heard using it is in the Bible. The beloved. But I am God's beloved. You are God's beloved. Nothing can stand up to God's love. Nothing can stand up to the love of God. Nothing is, God's love is the most powerful, you know, everything, anything on this planet, in the universe. Romans 8.35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Question. Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or a famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Tribulation, distress, or persecution cannot stop your Heavenly Father's love from working on your behalf. None of that stuff. His love is, is it, his love for you is bigger and stronger than your financial woes, your marital problems, your kids going amok, your health concerns, all that. When God's heart, when God's heart of love moves for his beloved, he opens doors. There's doors that no one can shut. He makes a way that seems out of no way. Do you know he's a way maker? He is a way maker. He's making a way right now. And that's why we can't, we can't lose hope. We can't lose confidence in him. Because he's a, he's a, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He's I'm a, I'm, I'm a way maker. Watch this. You don't have to worry about your children. God told me one time I was being worried. I was worried by saying, I was worried by my children. And God reminded me. He said, I brought you out, didn't I? <laughs> he said, I, I brought you out. I'm going to bring them out too. No, he said, just keep, just keep on. You keep on doing what you're supposed to do. Just, just, just don't, don't worry about them. Just keep on praising me for him. Yeah, I brought you out. And when God said that to me, I said, whoa. He did. Amen. He brought me out of all my muck and mire. He brought me out of my insanity. Because you know, you could be, you'd be crazy out there. Yeah. Just, as crazy as, as, just as crazy as a loony being out there in that world. And do some crazy stuff. But the same God that delivered me out of my muck and mire is the same God going to deliver the ones you worried about. The same God got his hands on him for good and not evil. Just like, he, just like he had for us. So we have to stop it. And he put me, stopped me in my tracks. I said, Lord, you're all you're right. But you know what? He's always right. It, but I was so... I was so grateful for him ministering to me because I was, I was going down that road of misery, going down that road of despair, going down that road of confusion, of worry, torment, where am I my kids, where am I my kids, out there doing this. And the devil try to paint you pictures when they out there. 
He'll try to paint a picture of them doing some wickedness or, or getting in trouble or doing something where they gain somebody getting a, uh, doing some harmful to him. I had a dream one time and I woke up screaming. Oh, it wasn't a dream, it was a nightmare. And the Lord said, it's not real, it's not real, it's not real. Because I, I was dreaming, it was, I'm not going to even repeat it, it was, it, was, it was horrible. And I woke up screaming, oh Lord, Lord. And, 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 and the Lord had to rescue me because my emotion was gone. And I was, my heart was beating fast and I was terrified. And I, I woke up out of my sleep screaming because that's how real the dream was. And the Lord rescued me. And that's what he does. Because he loves us. He don't want us to be worried about anything. He don't want to and you worry about sin. Let's go to... Uh, uh, um, um, Matthew 6.30 something. Worry about sin. How I know I'm worried? You worry about sin, complaining, mummering, worry. And a lot of times we don't worry about sin out loud. We'll worry about sin in our hearts. We can meditate on this stuff in our hearts. And our hearts be thinking all kind of thoughts. And getting upset behind the thoughts. And we was over this scripture. We went on this scripture. I don't know how many, how long we were on this scripture, but I should know it. I should know this scripture. But it's a good thing we have this Bible, and I can read it. It says, um, "It said, therefore take no thought, saying, what you should eat, what you shall drink, or what, uh, or what, what shall you uh, wear." Amplified by uh, says. Therefore, do not worry and be anxious, saying, What are we going to have to eat? Or what are we going to have to drink? Or what are we going to have to wear? It says, um, it says, For after all, for after these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need uh, all these things. But seek. Ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It said, therefore, therefore, no, uh, uh, it says, therefore, do not worry or be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have worries and anxieties of its own. Sufficient for each day is the, its own trouble. He don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow got his own trouble. When you get there, you, when you get there, you'll know what's going on. He said, don't be worried about saying what's going on with my finances, what's going on with this and what's going on with that. God knows all things. Our, our position is, is uh, praise him for it. Praise him for it. Thank him for it. It's going to work out for you. He said, it's going to work out for your good. It's going to work out for your good. I don't care what it is. It's going to work out, it's gonna work out for your good. Because it, it, it's working now. It's working out. So, um, even during the lean time, you will never find the righteous forsaken. Psalm 37, 25, it says, I've been young and I am old. You have not seen the righteous forsaken, a, a be, a, a his seed begging for bread. Can famine or recession stop God's love from providing for his beloved? Start worrying about what you can do and start praising God for what he's already done. Start praising God for what he's already done. What about earthquakes or terrorist bombing? Romans, uh, Romans 8.37 it says, But in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who love us. We are more than conquerors. Whether it's earthquakes, whether it's, whether it's tidal waves, whatever it is, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. We are more than conquerors. So we don't have to worry about because God got us. God loves us. And sometimes I, I get in a position where I'm going through things and I'm thinking, Lord, I said, Lord, I have to stop and take a, 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 a love break. We were talking about that love break. I've been doing a lot of taking love breaks lately. And sit down and just tell him how good he is, how faithful he is, how much he's done and what he's doing in my life. Thanking the Lord for his faithfulness. Thanking the Lord that he's not a man that should lie. Thanking the Lord that whatever he, his word is true. Thanking the Lord for, for life and health and stamina and energy. Sometimes you know you, you walk around you you feel like you don't have no energy. Just start praising God for the energy that he's given you for the day. The energy to do what he, you need to do for this day. John, uh, 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 3 John 1-2 he says, Beloved, 
I wish above all things you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotion prosper. Because God wants to uh, 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 be in health, even as our mind prospers. And we are thanking Him for our walk in divine health and healing. I thank you, Lord, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. We know and believe God love us. You have to know it, and do you know it, and you believe it. God knows us intimately. He knows the number of hairs on our head. God knows your pain in your body, your financial uh, concern, uh, your financial concerns about uh, wanting a job, or a financial concern about being on that a certain job. God knows everything, and He knows everything about us. So we got to stop caring and worrying and start praising and worshiping the living God. Sometimes we get too much pressure. The pressure of driving to work. There's a lot of pressure out there. Driving in the streets. Stay almost to stay in the spirit when you're, <laughs> when you're driving your car now. You have, to stay, you have to stay in the spirit. The pressure of driving, the pressure that we face at work, the pressure of the freeway driving from work to home. And when you, get to, when you finally get home, the pressure when we get home. A lot of times people be so uptight, the first thing they do when they get home, they start hollering at the kids. I think that, make, that we need to remember how, how wonderful God is and start praising God when we get home. And we'll, we'll stop hollering at the kids. I want to talk about, uh, 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 before we finish this course, I was talking about how God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. God is a rewarder. In, in, in Hebrews 11.6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is a rewarder, he, that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In other words, the faithful, the faith that pleased God is the kind of faith that believes that God exists, and that he is a rewarder. God exists, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And with our faith, it's impossible to please him. And I was reading about Noah. Noah had was a, 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 a walked in obedience. Noah lived in an evil time in, the, in, in Genesis, in, in the book of Genesis, in, in Genesis 6, 5 through 8. However, Noah was a righteous man, meaning he was right with God and lived a godly life. And God says of him, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and, become, and became an heir of the righteous, which is by faith, as Hebrews 11, 7. Now, Noah, God told Noah to uh, uh, build an ark, and Noah obeyed God. Noah preached, God. Noah preached God's truth for 120 years. The people would not believe and, 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 and they rejected what no more preached about God. For 120 years, Noah was ridiculed, persecuted. But God said he, he, he was the reward of those who diligently seek him. He was diligent to obey God for 120 years. The evidence of, what, of that, they, uh, uh, how they acted and how they lived, they did not, the people did not believe God, did not receive God. They live without any respect for God or life itself. Murder, idolatry, rampant. Men did every sinful thing imaginable. But this man named Noah, he believed God. And God, and God I mean, he moved, you know, for 120 years. God, God spoke, Noah believed. God said, more act. God said Noah believed. God said Noah act. He acted on what God said. In the day before the flood, there was evil time. Yet one man, Noah, believed God. One man found grace because he trusted God who created him. I mean, it, 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 I mean uh, uh, Noah was a man just like you and I. What made him outstanding was he believed God. He based his whole life not just part of it, on the promise of God, the covenant with God. God said it and he did what God said. Uh, Noah believed in God and accepted it and feared God. Thus when God said he was going to destroy the earth, 
Noah believed him. And Noah went out and did exactly what God told him to do. And so as children of God, we need to start practicing this. We start getting in line with what God tells us to do. And, 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 and because of that love, we have confidence and trust in God. Because of that love, we're going we know, we know, we to move on what God tells us to do. We're not going to, because we know he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So God says, seek him while he might be found. Seek him in the morning. Seek him. And not just and and, 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 and don't be don't be worried about anything. Cast your cares on him. And you know, and know how he loves us. Every time we think about how much he loves us, we look at the cross. We just look at the cross. He died for us. He redeemed us. He shed his blood for us. He did it everything for us. Everything was already prepared before the foundation of the world. There is no shortage of anything in this earth realm. There is no shortage because God knew exactly how many millions and billions, how many people are on this earth. I don't have a clue in how many numbers. You might know how many people are on this earth, but however many people are on this earth, every need is provided. If God has got enough for everything up on this earth for mankind because God prepared it before the foundation of the world. And so God want us to look at the cross. He wants us to cast all our cares upon him because he cared for us. He wanted us to remind it to live the life, the good life. He wants to worry free. Because in love. It's not that God we love God. He loved He loved me with a, uh, He loved you with an undying love. With un, he loved all of his children. He loved us. His love is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So when you Think about God and his goodness. Think about how good he is. Not he's going to be. He is good. He is worthy to be praised. He is the God of God, our Lord. He loves you. God loves you, Richard. He loves you, Jackie. He loves you, Shirley. And he loves you, Ollie. And he loves you. And don't you ever doubt it. Don't you ever give up on God's promise. All of his promises, yes and amen, to the glory of God. God love is unconditional, and he would love. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Don't let the devil make you condemn you, because his love, there's no condemnation in his love. Therefore, there is no condemnation. So you just be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, and keep walking in his love, and keep receiving that love, that free gift from God, in Jesus' name. This, okay, this time... In Jesus' name, amen. Now we're going to talk about, we need to get a, re, a response paper. What I learned and what I'm going to do with what I learned. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.